Hello, and welcome to Practicing the Way. Whether you are joining us for Sabbath or prayer or fasting, the practices are designed to walk you into a spiritual discipline from the life of Jesus in order to help you adopt the overall lifestyle of Jesus himself, what Jesus called the way and the early church called a rule of life. Each one of these practices from the way of Jesus are ancient. They go back thousands of years. They are time-tested disciplines for the spiritual life that have been used by millions of followers of Jesus to hear the voice of the Father, to be formed into the image of the Son, and to experience the love and power of God by the Spirit. We at Practicing the Way are here to serve as your guide, but you are the one walking out the journey, and the people around you are your companions on the way, and of course, Jesus is the one you are following. To that end, each practice is four sessions long, and it's designed to be done over four weeks. Each session includes an interactive experience where you come together with your small group or community, listen to a teaching, and then dialogue about it. But it also includes spiritual exercises because we don't just talk about the Sabbath or prayer or fasting. We go out that coming week and practice Sabbath or prayer or we fast. And then you come back together for the next session to reflect on your experience as a community. I can't wait to see what Jesus does in you and in your community through this practice. But before you begin, a few thoughts to set you up for success. The why, the what, and the how of practicing the way of Jesus. First off, the why. Jesus' invitation was not to convert to a new religion called Christianity, but to become a disciple in what he called the kingdom of God. The word disciple is mathetes in Greek, and it literally means a learner or a student. But a lot of scholars argue the best word we have in the English language to capture the full meaning of mathetes is apprentice. Because discipleship or apprenticeship in Jesus' first century world wasn't just about information, but about formation. In the first century Galilee, if you were an apprentice of a rabbi, your life was organized around three basic goals. Number one, to be with your rabbi. You would literally follow him around Israel 24 seven and spend every waking moment at his side. Number two, to become like your rabbi, not just to know what he knows, but to live how he lives, to imitate his life. You wanted to be him. And number three, to do what he did. You were apprenticing to become a rabbi yourself and one day carry on his work. When you were done with your apprenticeship program, he would turn to you and say something like, okay, kid, go and make disciples. If you flip that model of discipleship around from the first century to the 21st, to be an apprentice of Jesus is to organize your entire life around the same three driving goals. Number one, to be with Jesus. What the French monk Brother Lawrence called the practice of the presence of God. What A.W. Tozer called constant conscious communion. What Jesus himself called abiding to live every moment awake and aware of God all around you. Number two, to become like Jesus, to be formed in your inner woman or man into a person who is like your rabbi more than that who is like God, a person who is pervaded by love. And number three, to do what he did, or better said, to do what Jesus would do if he were you. Whether you are a single itinerant teacher as Jesus was, or a young parent, or a construction worker, or an electrical engineer, to make your contribution to the world, to live out your full destiny in the kingdom of God. This is what it means to follow Jesus or to apprentice under Jesus. Now, the practices are how we apprentice Jesus. What exactly are the practices of Jesus? The practices, also known as the spiritual disciplines, are habits based on the lifestyle of Jesus that create time and space for us to access the presence and power of the Father and in doing so be transformed by the Spirit. Think about it. What is a discipline in general? Here's a standard definition. 
A discipline is any activity I can do by direct effort that will eventually enable me to do that which currently I cannot do by direct effort. For example, exercise is the primary metaphor used by the writer Paul in the New Testament. Let's say you want to bench press your own weight. Not that I know how to do this from personal experience, but I've read a book about it. How do you do that? Do you lie on the bench and just try really hard? No, that will not work. In fact, it's actually very dangerous. You could kill yourself. Now, why is it so hard? It's not that it's impossible. It's that it's impossible for you or me in our current state. So what do we do? We start with a few push-ups at a time. And if that's too much, one. And if that's too much, we do it on our knees. Then we work up to 5, 10, 20, 30, 50. Eventually, through practice, you become the kind of person who has the capacity to bench press your own weight, not through trying really hard, but through training really hard. The practices are to spiritual formation. What exercise is to strength training. They are a way to grow in the power to be transformed into a new kind of person. Spiritual disciplines are a way not just to exercise your own willpower, but to open up your mind and body to a power that is far beyond you, that of God himself. Practices like Sabbath or silence or simplicity are good for us in the same way that mindfulness or exercise or green tea is good for us. But they don't actually transform us into people of love. They create time and space for God to transform us from the inside out. There's no official list of the practices of Jesus, but at Practicing the Way, we group them into nine core practices that function as the building blocks for our rule of life. A rule of life is a schedule and a set of practices and relational rhythms that center our life around following Jesus. The nine practices that make up our rule of life for the modern era are Sabbath, solitude, prayer, fasting, scripture, simplicity, generosity, hospitality, and community. All nine are a means to an end. For example, the end goal of Sabbath is not to say, I practice Sabbath. It's to become a person who is marked by an inner spirit of restfulness, who is calm, kind, grounded in your own body and at ease, not in a hurry, but present to each moment, grateful and living in the goodness of God. In other words, a person who is like Jesus. The ultimate aim of all the practices is to become a person who is pervaded by love. And the practices are our part in our spiritual formation. Jesus, our rabbi and Lord, has a part, and we have a part. Ancient disciples called this synergy, working not for God, but with God. As St. Augustine said in the fourth century, without him, we cannot, but without us, he will not. We can't save ourselves and transform ourselves into people of love. We need to be saved and be transformed by God into people of love. But we can take a day to rest. We can begin our morning in quiet prayer. We can read scripture. We can live in community. We can open up not just our homes, but our lives to the poor and become family together around the table. And through the practices, we can set our whole life before God and let God do the deep work. To be very clear with the practices, we are not earning the love of God. We're not earning anything. We are giving our heart and body more fully to Jesus who already gave himself to us in love. That is the gospel and the discipleship of Jesus. The practices do require effort, but as Dallas Willard used to say, grace isn't opposed to effort, it's opposed to earning. But speaking of effort, just like learning any new skill, how to play the piano or speak French or golf, Learning how to Sabbath or pray or read scripture will also require practice to master, and a bit of instruction is very helpful. To that end, the how. Here's five tips to keep in mind as you begin your practice. First off, start small. Start where you are, not where you feel you should be, because Jesus has yet to bless anyone other than where they actually are. 
If you have young kids, don't start with an hour of daily prayer in the morning. Start with five or 10 minutes. Or if that's too much, recite Psalm 23 on your pillow before you climb out of your bed to get little Johnny out of the crib. Start with what the behavioral psychologists call tiny habits, small, easily attainable, fun steps with a quick reward. In our zeal, it's easy to overreach and try to live like a monk on day one. The Anglican priest Margaret Gunther calls this first week of Lent syndrome, and it is a strategy doomed to fail. Don't be afraid to ask yourself, how do I enjoy God? And start there. Secondly, think subtraction, not addition. Dallas Willard once called hurry the great enemy of spiritual life and said, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. The reality is most of us are just too busy to enjoy God. As you begin your practice, we are not calling you to add this practice onto your already over busy, maxed out life. We're not calling you to do more, but to do less, to clear your life, not clutter it. So if you're going to add this new practice in to your day or week, the first task is to audit your life and cut out a few habits from your regular routine. Netflix, social media, that side project, whatever it is for you. Less is more when your goal is to walk in what Jesus called the easy yoke. Third, you get out what you put in. This is true of pretty much anything in life, and it's especially true of the practices. The more you give yourself to Jesus through each practice, the more you will experience deep inner healing and transformation. The more you just kind of dabble with it, the less impact it will have. Now, anything is better than nothing. As I said, start where you are, not where you feel you should be. But at the same time, the more you give yourselves to this journey over the next four weeks, the more space you open up for God to change you. To that end, we created a companion guide, which is available as a digital download and also in a print-on-demand version. In it, we have a reach exercise for each of the four sessions for those of you that want to take your practice to the next level, as well as recommended reading and a whole series of podcasts we created to go along with each practice. It's all free at practicingtheway.org. Fourth, remember the J-curve. Learning theorists point out that learning any new skill from baking crepes to oil painting to Sabbath tends to follow a J-shaped curve. You get worse before you get better. I will never forget when I was learning to play the guitar. A year or so in, I realized that the proper picking technique was up, down, up, down. But this was the late 90s, grunge was all in, and I was playing all down. In order to go forward, I had to go backward and relearn all over again, and it was terrible. Riffs that I was proficient at, now I was clumsy at or slow or I could not even do anymore. I got worse, And then eventually, with practice and a lot of patience, I got much better. In the same way, you may enjoy your day off, but when you attempt to Sabbath, you may feel anxious or or fidgety, or you may love to drink your coffee in the quiet of the morning, but when you attempt solitude or prayer, you may feel just weird. Just stay with it. Resist the urge to judge or critique or overthink it. Questions will come into your mind like, am I doing a good job or not? Do I like this? Do I dislike this? Is it working? None of those questions are very helpful. When they come up, just gently set them aside and take a deep breath. Be patient with yourself and the process. Follow the J curve down and then up. Finally, there is no formation without repetition. Formation into a person of love is not a four-week process. Formation is slow, deep, and at times, boring work. In the moment, you often don't feel like the practices are doing all that much, but they are. God is at work in you through them. They have a cumulative effect. They add up over time like compound interest. The disciplines are the spiritual equivalent of Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. In the moment, you just feel like you're waxing Mr. Miyagi's car or nailing the gazebo, but actually, you're becoming a karate master. In the moment, you just feel like you're reading your Bible in the morning or going to church or practicing generosity, but actually, you're becoming more like Jesus. 
This is a tough pill to swallow in our culture of instant gratification, but there is great joy to be found in repetition if we can learn to slow down and delight in the present moment. May you unhurry your life to the pace of Jesus, our rabbi, and may you do the kinds of things he did and live in the goodness of the kingdom of God. Grace and peace to you as you practice the way of Jesus. 